So I, I wasn't really sure what kind of format or what you wanted us to do here today. So I didn't quite get that information. Um, so what I've kind of heard is that I'm going to kind of just kind of go briefly over the process that we're going through, what's kind of led us to put these concepts for really major changes in Southwest and Northwest Seattle and the communities on either end of that. Um, and then we're going to get into a, a question and answer. Yeah, Doug might give some highlights of some cool. of the changes. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of changes. I, I can quickly go through some of the major changes, and um, then we can have questions. If that's what the group is just do, we can do that. The key to all this is that this is the very beginning Absolutely. of this process. These are suggestions, and we would like to see that. So if we could have a few minutes to tell you about them, then we can welcome your input. Do you have a printout yet of these proposed changes? So yes, as a matter of fact, um, they're available. There's a lot of information available on the Metro Online website, on the Have a Say uh, website. So you can go there and there's maps and descriptions and alternatives and um, for all of the concepts that are out. And you know, and I will stress that you know these these are concepts and. We're putting them out because we want to hear what people have to think. Um, we, you know, and we're really kind of looking at the system as a whole. And you know, the idea, what well, we heard a lot about, is that we should be more efficient and we should be more effective. And we're putting out concepts that we believe can move us in that direction. But there's more than you know one way to plan a bus system. You know, it's like we're kind of taking the opportunity of the implementation of the C and D line as the trigger for a lot of these um, changes. So we want to make sure that we are um, you know, going to implement this, this more frequent, I think particularly um, in the midday and in the evenings uh, in West Seattle and up in Ballard. You know, it's kind of this backbone it's you know running you know really kind of the monorail old monorail alignment concept Ballard West Seattle um, and we want to make sure that we can we restructure service so we don't duplicate um, that we open up more uh, opportunities to use the bus to more destinations uh, that we can make <coughs> service uh, more direct I mean, we're sitting here at South. Um, Seattle Community College where, you know, the 128 now does this huge deviation to get back here uh, and then head back on its route as it heads to the South Center. So, I mean, things like that that we, you know, kind of you know, have been doing for a long time that maybe we could do things better. So, we're asking for your input on these concepts. You know, this really kind of, you know, started, you know, in 2008 where we are going gangbusters and, and carrying a lot of folk. And unfortunately, for um, like there are many, many of us and uh, governments, we were impacted by the Great Recession. So people started spending less. Our primary source of funding being sales tax. Our revenues uh, plummeted. And you know, kind of at the, the same time, we didn't have dollars. Um, you know, a lot of people needed the service even more. Um, although ridership has dropped primarily because people are not, not as many people have jobs, and, and employment is a big driver of ridership. So we've actually spent more time in the last year thinking about how we were going to cut the system than we thought how we were going to modify it or, or grow the system. Um, and you know, we tried to limit that as much as we can from immediately taking kind of this nine-step plan, which you know, did as much as we can to preserve service. Um, we increased fares, you know, 80% over a four-year period. We tapped into our reserves. We found every way that we could to be more efficient. We got together with the region and the Regional Transit Task Force to kind of talk about, you know, what we might do uh, to change Metro into a more efficient and effective organization. And, and the task force actually came back with you know, there were times it was kind of this up and um, downhill. We know we're going to get anywhere with this group. Are we ever going to get away from you know the 40, 40, 20 service allocation? That many of you are probably aware of where 
the new service hours would go to the suburban areas, um, or 80% of the new service hours. But it's amazing how this group got together and really thought, you know, what is important? How can the transit be more effective? And they really kind of went into this productivity that we should run a system that is productive. You know, ridership is an important part of a transit agency. You know, there are other goals that we have too. We want to make sure that we serve the people that need it most. <coughs> and everybody through King County pays taxes, so we want to make sure that appropriate service is spread throughout the community. But the big thing was we should be productive, but we should use kind of this data-based approach. And this was the Regional Transit Task Force recommendations were folded into a new strategic plan and new guidelines that were adopted by the Regional Transit Committee and the Council in July of this year. And, you know, I would say its focus is that we're transparent in the work that we do, that we show you the numbers. You know, we try to get away, we've often been accused of being in a black box, and I believe this plan and the way we're approaching this outreach, hopefully it will show you that we want to show you why these guidelines are directing us to make uh, con or put forward concepts for your um, review. But you know, there's trade-offs with everything that we do, and you know those trade-offs, positive and negative. These concepts, some folks are going to have to walk farther to get to the bus, but they would also maybe walk to a bus that was more frequent and more direct. So. There are, um, I'm sure if you use the bus, you will find that there may be more connections that you can get to. But it also means, it could be where you travel all the time you now to transfer to get there. So, I mean, there are going to be trade-offs back and forth, and that's why we need your input. But we really also ask this group to spread the word. You know, we're having, uh, I guess, six more meetings in the next two weeks. I believe one of them at Chief Self High School. Chief Self and Madison Middle School and uh, one in South Park. So I really ask you to go back to the community councils that you're representing and spread the word that we'd really like to have folks come out. Um, come out and talk to us in person. And uh, also there's many, many other opportunities to provide input. I think Dan is going to go through those. Could we have these two sheets for people back here, please? Right. I'll take one while I'm here. Okay. Yes, so, there's also I mean, one at uh, yeah. And actually, here's the, the list right here. So, <coughs> so this kind of is a, a map of the all-day network. Um, there would be a, a peak period network on the other side. So 24 hours a day? Or well, all day does is probably 18 hours. 18 hours. Yes. Uh, but it's a service that runs outside the peak period. Um, some of it may not run as late as at night as others. Um, and then the peak overlay will be on the other side. Thank you for comments. Questions? Unless you wanted to have Doug kind of quickly run through things. Quickly, because we just it's hard to see some of these. Mm -hmm. Which one? Doug. Okay. Do you, do you want me at the table? Do you want to stand over Okay. So I'm just going to go over a few of these uh, major changes, and uh, I'll be speaking off the, the map that uh, has been handed out. It's the it's the all day map uh, primarily that I'll be talking about. The um, I, I think Jonathan, we, there's already been discussion of the C line. I we handed out the map that showed the routing. The um, the C line is replacing the Route 54 and part of the Route 55, and um, operating from Westwood Village, essentially following the 54 routing. The C line would not cover the portion of the current 54 between White Center and and Westwood Village. So I, I don't think I'll, I'll spend more on, on the on the C line at this point. Some of the other uh, changes. Um, talk about a couple of the major routes. Route 120, it's actually the busiest route in, in southwest Seattle. <laughs> Operates on the uh, Del Ridge and Dam corridor between Burien and downtown Seattle, right up and down Del Ridge. We, we actually have just a minor change to that, and if you look on the map, it's the light <coughs> line. We are
are revising that to jog off of Del Ridge over to Westwood Village. As the shopping center has redeveloped over the last few years, we have begun to get a, a steady stream of requests for can the 120 go over there. It's not a big deviation, it's a, about three extra minutes. So that's one of the proposals we're going to make. It's a minor change, but the 120 is, is, is actually a, a major route in this area. I know there are a lot of concerns about the Route 21, and our proposal with, with this uh, package of changes is to have the Route 21, it's still going to run up and down 35th, but we're also proposing to shift it over to terminate at Westwood Village on Barton, and it would actually do the same loop around the <coughs> large block, 26th, um, Roxbury, of 35th. Route 21 Express, no change to that. Harbor Heights would still be served by the by the uh, 21 Express. Only if you work nine to five corporate jobs. Okay, but the um, the change to the local services it would not go into Harbor Heights, and, and that is one of the proposals. So Rob, so the 21. Uh, yeah, that's the tan, that's the tan line on the map, by the way. No, I should stop it. It was a village now. Yeah, okay. and, and actually we, we have a few of the 21s, well actually all the afternoon 21s are, are technically parked there for uh, for the layover because we don't have a, a proper layover northbound on 35th and Roxbury. So they can't get on it there. They can't get on there though. Right. We, we consider it just a, lay, a layover for the driver, but uh, with this change it would become, that, that entire loop would become oh. the all day part of the route. So. And, and again, trade-offs because we're, we're shifting, I mean, no impact for 35th, we are shifting the tail end of that route to terminate at Westwood rather than serve Arbor Heights. So the, uh, the Route 128, that's another uh, of the, among the major routes serving West Seattle, and that's the, uh, it's kind of the dark purple line on the map there. We've made a major, we're proposing a major change to the Route 128. Currently that route runs up and down California Avenue from Ab from Admiral the Admiral District through the junction to Morgan, then it jogs over to um, South Seattle Community College on Sullivan and Morgan, and um, does the loop and then doubles back down to White Center and then on, on out into the county. So we're we're making a big change to this route. We're proposing to kind of streamline it in West Seattle and, and try to serve some new neighborhoods and. If you look on the map, the, the route is going to run the full length of the 16th Avenue Southwest Corridor out here past the college, go up to the north end of the hill, and then follow the like the 125 routing down to Del Ridge. Then we're proposing to operate over to the junction via Genesee and Avalon, and that would be a kind of a new <coughs> coverage, and um, then have the route continue up to have to the Admiral District and then down to Alki. So trying to link a few new neighborhoods with the Route 128, streamline the, the routing between the junction and the college, and connect Del Ridge to West Seattle Junction, which is something that we've been trying to do for a long time. We've, we've gotten a lot of requests from it. We don't have the funding to just bring in a new route to do that. So that's one of the changes. And I can take questions at any time. Is it going to go away from Morgan? It's going to go off of Morgan? Well, if you look on the on the map, it's 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 that it's hard to see on the map, but it's 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 not going to operate on Morgan and Sullivan between California and 16th Avenue Southwest. It is going to stay on it, from, White, from White Center. It's going to go the full length of the 16th Avenue Southwest corridor, and then come down off the top of the hill up here to Delridge, and then that short block between the, the Del, on Delridge to Genesee. And then that's 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 new coverage on Genesee. And you're going to put something else down Morgan. Is that what you're yes, to yes. There's a and yeah, it's Route 40, and I'll and I'll get to that. Sir, you have to Well, I I guess at this point it might be better to hear all of the routes because I'm very I, I appreciate the attempt to get new neighborhoods with 128, but you're sacrificing neighborhoods uh, here. At, like for example, I won't be able to use any bus service to get to South Seattle Community College. From the way the map looks, I would need to go down the sea line and then wait for a second bus to transfer up for something that's less than two where, miles. Where are, where are you getting um, the 128? That, uh, the 128 that comes down the Sylvian Way, uh, right there by the home oh, okay, there's so there's a number of South Seattle students that catch the 128 and then ride it up the Myrtle and then come back okay. down. Okay. <coughs> 
Right. Okay. So, so it would. So you would have a. a you would have a plan. <coughs> yeah, but. Yeah, but you're looking at going three miles, four miles, five miles out of your way. Yeah. Rerouting all the way around for your transfers to come back to South Seattle. I'm confused about that. Because. For example, where I live right there, which is just a little bit north of the Southwest Morgan Street right there on the uh, bridge, <coughs> what you're telling me that I would need to do to get to both work and school here at South Seattle is I would need to catch the sea line or the 120, go down Del Ridge, and then I would have to then wait for either the 125 or the 128 to then come all the way back up to South Seattle community. No, you take the 40 and then you change the it on the 120. You to you could use this 40. Yeah, but it's still two transfers, transfers. Yeah. and it's still increasing the actual. No, it would be one, one transfer, transfer for you. It would be, it would be a single yeah, bus. But, but, but I understand exactly what you're saying. So what we have done here is to try to you know, be more direct for some customers, in effect not doing that loop back and forth, but what that does is a trade-off for folks that are, you know, in between California and 16. Still covered, but if you wanted to head north, it requires a transfer. So I've got two concerns with the 128 reroute. I actually live over on Bashon Island, and oftentimes end up catching the 54 to what is now California and Oregon, or the 128 coming back up to the college. Uh, I would, with this new proposal, have to take the 54 C line, California Morgan, take the 40, up to 16, take the 128 to get to school, no, no. Or, or shoot the 4 all the way down. But then I've got the problem with bad weather and winter coming up. I've got to try and catch the 128 to go down that Genesee Hill. What are you guys doing for that? Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah, yeah. Genesee is steep, and, and in inclement weather, we, we would not run. So, what's it. the we, reroute we would option? Probably for the route up to uh, Spokane and come in on Avalon Way. It would be a, a little, I mean, we have dozens of reroutes for snow on many of our routes. So, that, that's probably what we would do because that is a steep hill, no doubt about it. And how are the buses going to be able to handle that in just regular weather? Because that's a, I mean, it's a steep I hill take my the, bike. I'm, my motorcycle on that hill, and yeah. my motorcycle. Yeah, I, I don't know what the what, I don't know what the grade is, but it's it's we, we operate on hills that steep. I mean, um, elsewhere, the, uh, the the one issue that, that that is hanging out there is that we, we do need to have a traffic light at, at Avalon and, and uh, Genesee so we can make the left turn, and that that's something we need to continue to work with. Uh, I talked to the right folks on that. <laughs> so, but, you know, so, what we're here tonight is to hear exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, we want these comments. We want to uh, we'll make sure that you put them in. I'm going to write them down. I, now. I'm you want to make sure you put them in. Yeah. 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 Really but, we, but, uh, but I also, if you have suggestions for what would work better. And I and I'm one person from Arbor Heights, but I can tell you Arbor Heights is about ready to get. He's going. They're getting ready to go up in arms if this continues. Uh, my wife, for one. Uh, but some other people too, and some people want 35th. Uh, unless you have, if you if you like our neighbor two dollars down working in a saloon, uh, I'm not going to be nice about this. Uh, if uh, if you don't if you don't work a peak hour corporate job at Cairo or at one of the banks, or if you're a retailer uh, living out there, uh, you're either going to have to get a car to make your middle of the day jobs or your <laughs> late evening jobs or your SOL. Um, uh, and I'm being nice tonight. You don't want to hear what's coming out of Arbor Heights and how it's growing. Um, uh, people think I'm the harsh one. I'm the nice one. Um, you're just shoving people out. You're cutting off that. It looks like Normandy Park, uh, to be perfectly honest, is, is in the same boat as, um, as uh, in a worse boat, actually, than, uh, than Arbor Heights. Uh, you say you're, tra you're you're accessing some, giving some access to some other neighborhoods so that need to be accessed, like Delwick to to the junction. That's a necessity, but that doesn't mean you you shove over uh, other other communities over the cliff. And that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, you're basically saying that a self-employed person like me, um, have, or that someone with bad legs like several of the people you have senior citizens. You have my wife who's only 51 almost 52 and has bad legs and hips, but you have senior citizens out there who go shopping in the middle of the day so that they don't have, in Arbor Heights, so they don't have to deal with the road tower 
and you're saying either do that or move to a home, either deal with rush hour or move to a home, next you will be, and this is me talking now, next you'll be making laws that say if you're over a certain age, you've got to go to a home because we're not going to serve you. And this is what you're doing to Arbor Heights. Looks like Normandy Park's in the same boat. Uh, and uh, only worse. Uh, and you need to find a way to serve the entire city, not your special interests. Well, we're, I know we're everybody's gone silent. They yeah. don't like the way I talk. Well, we're waiting the, for the response. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and if you are here to take input, what I have heard a lot of defending your position. That's not taking input, boys. So the input is keep service to Arbor Heights and Normandy. Yes, and, and, our, Norm, and, and, and still look at ways to serve people like Delbridge that are connected to the junction. You don't screw one group to take care of another group. Well, what, what, I tell you, the and, and you're here to take input. If you're here to take input, then take input. So I don't try to defend. I'm not trying to defend. I'm telling you why the concepts That's came out the way they did. We have um, these guidelines now that suggest that productivity is an important Would you like me to show you how you deliberately show you on the yeah, schedules, how you deliberately response. deceive the people so that they're not there at the bus stops because they think there are no buses when there are four and five and six and seven buses going by during rush hour? You deliberately deceive the customers, and I'll lay it out. Sir, I'll pull out a 21 and show you how you do it. Your point, and we only have limited time yeah. for this meeting. And we hear these so then he needs to talk honestly. But I'm, I'm, when you well, I, I'm with offended the that you with think the that I'm not talking schedule honestly. So, themselves. I, I can see that it may not be valid. Our guidelines suggest that we should look at productivity as one of the primary factors. You deliberately set up to be so, no, 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 We will ask you to leave if you continue. So we brought a concept out that still serves that area in the peak because the ridership in the off-peak is low. Matter of fact, um, 4% of the ridership on the Route 21 is taken up by 19% of the resources serving that area. So we're not, that's why that proposal came forward. It's, we're here today to hear that, and we've heard it already online and uh, meetings today, that people think that Arbor Heights should be served and we should look at a way to do that. But the reason this proposal came out is that the policy that we have now pushes us in that direction about productivity. Then you need to sit down and look at your schedules that protect, that drive people away from the buses that are there because they, the schedule says they aren't. Oh, uh, what do you mean by that service schedule? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I, I, I really don't want to take up the meeting's time for that uh, because it is an extended look at sit here and look at the schedule and see how it's, it's very deceptive. Uh, and, and has been complained about over, I've talked with uh, Tom Randall over, over a year and a half and others have to push it through, and it's ignored. It's not something that this meeting has time for, or this group has time for, but you need to look at it. Okay, well, I think we've heard, heard, the heard that the Arbor Heights, and, and I just think that we just need to be respectful to our guests. And um, Then they need to take input and stop, stop here trying okay. to explain. Okay. You okay. need to Thank stop you. interrupting people. Thank you, Dorsal. Um, well, I want to say thank you for the 120 um, in particular because that has been a huge issue in getting to Westwood. My only input on that would be to consider actually starting it in February with the service change revision instead of waiting, starting the process sooner for the Delridge reroute because it's been such a need for such a long time. Is that, is that an ordinance item? Uh, I don't believe it is. Or the February changes are already, the ordinance is closed, yeah. but June, would be June hasn't. June would be the <laughs> We've heard from others well, that you like like yeah. I, I think that's something, we've heard from other people making that same uh, suggestion. And next we have Katie. Um, yeah, we of the Admiral Neighborhood Association are wondering what happened to North Admiral in all of your uh, calculations. Yes. There are a number of people ourselves included that use public transit frequently and wonder what's happened to the 55. <coughs> right. The, 50, the 55 has is part of the uh, uh, merger with the 54, 55 into the rapid ride. The, um, the 55, the coverage provided by the 55 is uh, replacement coverage is the 128 between the um, West Seattle Junction and Admiral. There is no replacement, there is no new route proposed with this uh, network north of, north of Admiral, like up to Atlantic Street. So 
the the only route that we're showing there is the uh, is the 775 the water taxi. Water taxi shuttle. Yeah, and there are the, there is a proposal to augment that water taxi service with to to provide a full time level of service on that route or something similar to that because that, that's another aspect of the proposal. Right now, the water taxi shuttles are are seasonal and they just recently ramped reduced their service level and the water taxi reduced its service level, but. One of the thoughts is that, that um, it might be possible to augment the water taxi shuttles so that they run year-round and provide year-round service like the regular metro route. Okay, Chas, what's next? So, overall, I'm affected, by the way. I lose the 22. Um, but I'm much more curious about the routing of the 50. Previously, our thoughts had been to route the 50 at least through the junction uh, and over, and going straight down Admiral Way and across to White Rail gives you only the Admiral and Alki audience. So I would strongly recommend that we route the new 50 down California to the junction, which would give Admiral at least more service between them and Alaska. Mm -hmm. And you would pick up the transfer uh, at the junction to get over to Soto and the three light rail stations. So then that, that would lead to Admiral just... Well, no, you take that pink line and you go, you follow the purple line down to the junction and then you go over the bridge. And since it's not a direct route from Admiral to downtown, I don't see that we're losing anything. Would there I be don't. anything left on Admiral? No. No, but I would not, I would not put that? my principal connection yeah. to Link Light Rail down okay. Admiral Way. Yeah, although with, with that change, that, that would... Result in no service on Admiral. So you can run, and then you can run a 776. Yeah. Well, I guess what I was thinking on that, because I was thinking that too, Chaz, um, is there somewhere down down in Luna Park where you could go from the C line onto the 50? Is that a reasonable transfer there? The, um, or you gotta... So if you're coming down Admiral Way and in some way of getting off the 50 to the C line? Right. So, 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 you know, if you're in the, if you're anywhere other than Admiral or Alki to get down right. to the light rail. So, I'm, I'm going to be brutal. I can't imagine that there are more people getting on the bus on Admiral Way than there are in Arbor Heights. So, abandoning Admiral Way for a higher traffic generating hub like Alaska Junction would not be much of an abandonment. Can I, I ask you really about the 128 I mean, before you leave it forever? We're not, the 128 does not run on Sundays, and I'm wondering if it oh, would start you know, the way it works best is if you hold your hand up and then get called. I did. But no I one, wasn't finished. You hold on. Oh, oh is dear. Thank That's you. too bad. It is too bad. I am one of the members of the community. Do you have any respect for that? I, I do. Am I do. But you, were, you interrupted me, okay? Well, you that's know. really bad. Okay, so let's so finish anyway, the point here. So my here question and then is, could you look at rerouting the 50 through the junction because you have a lot of people that would take it over to uh, at least get down the Rainier Valley. And as I said, the previous discussions that we had with Jack Latterman suggested that the 50 would go from Alaska Junction to Delbridge up Columbia Way. So you have basically done a, you know, I hate to say switch and bait, but uh, this 50 is not the 50 that was presented previously. Okay. So you'll look at it. Yeah, we will look at that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I thank you. I would like to know if the 128, if this all goes through, will run on Sunday, so it'll be a bus for us. Yes. 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 Thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, the gentleman from Admiral. Yeah, I, 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 if you take the Route 50 off of this from from Admiral, then we're left with nothing but the water taxi truck. And you got the 56 only going peak service. We're going to have nothing. That doesn't make any sense. We're, we're, we have to look into that, right? If we were I, I would question the, the numbers. I think the 55 right. has as many numbers as the, as the as the 21. I don't I don't agree with that either. I see the 55. It comes right past my condo window. It's certainly during commute hours. It's packed. You're going to put people from the 55 and the 56. And you're going to cram all those people onto the 128, and you're going to have people waiting, waiting at bus stops. And then you're going to cram them onto the C line. Then you're going to have buses full, and you're going to have people standing waiting for the next okay, bus. Okay, ma'am, are you 
north of uh, Emerald Lake? I'm between Admiral and Alaska, where we're going to lose. Oh, okay. Fine. Okay. And how about and what about that other little 57? What is the one that goes so, down to 35? It, it comes, there's a 57 that comes partly down California, and then it turns off. I know. So we are in some neighborhood. I don't know where it goes. Yeah. But, but we have, in our building, we have a blind woman who already takes a bus from Lighthouse for the Blind to downtown to transfer to the 55, and we have that sound light signal, the Tweety thing, mm -hmm. so she knows which way to cross and where the cars are coming. And now she's going to have to transfer at the junction, at the, all, at the cross always junction, to get another bus to get home. I mean, there are people in wheelchairs. There are. There's a blind woman in the building next door to us. She's blind and deaf. And we're, we're, what's she going to walk to Alaska? She's going to walk to the junction. It's, it's insane. You've so got you people keep, who can't walk. You've got people you would who can't advocate walk. keeping service on the 55. That's the yeah. route. That you know. And, you know, and, and I would say that it should run north like it does now so it doesn't cut off those people north of Admiral. They shouldn't be cut off either. So, so the, the, so, people, so, the so. people north of Admiral now have a one seat ride twice to downtown with this proposal. It's, during the day, and, and sometimes during the peak, you're going to have to transfer at least once, sometimes twice, to get downtown. Yeah, there's no direct route from up here to downtown. This is not the way to get people on the bus. I'll so, be in my car. So in the, in the peak period, Doug, there would be direct service? The, um, the, the, 50, so the, the, the 56 not. Express would continue to, to operate as, as it is. The 57, someone mentioned the 57, that, that would continue to operate. That, that doesn't come but none of those go north of the end. I'm looking at the peak only, and I don't see it's not. the bus that's directed downtown from up there. So, right, along along that section of California Avenue between Admiral and West Seattle Junction, you, you take one of, you take, say, the 128. And transfer. And transfer, yeah. And, you, and As opposed north of, to walking north across of the street Admiral, you have to downtown. transfer to the 128. Yeah. Pardon, pardon me? From, from north of Admiral, you have to transfer to the 128. If you take this water taxi shuttle or you walk up there. Or right. you take the pink one and you transfer there and then you transfer again at the junction and then... Yeah. Now, now with the 128, I, I think I forgot to add that the proposal is also, because it is a busy route and, and it covers so many um, neighborhoods, we were planning to improve the weekday uh, frequency every 15 minutes in the peak and possibly uh, a, set, a segment of the midday as well to run every 15 minutes. So that, that's a double on the service level. How, how late at night will it run? I think it's still going to roughly run about the same time, which I think is about 10 to 11 at night. It stops at 10 o'clock. The 55 runs till midnight. Yeah, the 55 runs Okay. Midnight. Well, that's, that's coming back else. from downtown. That, that's another us. detail we'd have to look at is trying to game. create a span that's similar to the 55 on that section. We won't be able to get home from the symphony. We won't be able to get home from the events Theater. downtown at all. I don't know. We have one in our in our condo. There's a blind deaf woman in the apartment next door to us. I don't know if there's a, a, I don't know, a building of all blind people. But you've got the senior home right up there by the McDonald's, you know, and you've got the high school. You got high school kids who are going to yeah. stand there by the PCC, who ride the 55 north and south from the high schools. Yeah. Right, you're cutting they'll, off all those high school they'll kids. They'll be all going on the 128. You're all going to get on there. Nobody's going to be able to get on the 128, no matter how frequently it runs. You're putting crowds and crowds of routes onto the 128, plus all the people who want to get over to the South Seattle Community College. Are you cutting the number of seats? Are the number of seats being cut? The number of seats on new equipment will be slightly less because they're a low floor. No, I mean total seat oh. capacity for West Seattle. You got X number of seats per day. I don't know how you learn any metrics. Are you cutting them? Um, I do not believe so, but I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I would have to go back and look. You know, and <coughs> the other thing is that you know seats are not the only capacity that we have. Um, so. You know, we're an urban system. We expect to have some standees. I don't mean so, seats but, to sit yeah, on. I mean, we can measure seats. I don't have that information. <laughs> we have another question right here. I have a couple of questions, but I'm going to try and narrow it down here. Um, I have. I want to start off with kind of a geeky question. 
So I'm colorblind, and some of these colors are really hard for me to track on this. I'm not even colorblind, they're still hard to track. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if there is a way to, on the website, have something interactive that you can click to have it show specific routes that you want to see. So you can, on the website, there's that map, but then for every route, there's a description, a route narrative that says, here's what it does today, here's what it will do under this change, here's okay. why we're proposing the change in a map that's not color, <laughs> that will show you the change to the route. Okay. So you can look it up by route. Okay, excellent. Um, okay. Then the next, sorry, just... No, go ahead. Um, how does King County Metro calculate what peak time is? I mean, for the fare or no for, for peak travel? Peak how do you guys? How do you figure yeah. out what peak well, service is? I mean, generally the, the peak period is six to nine in the morning and three to six in the afternoon. But that time period has grown and continues to spread. Um, I mean, one of the discussions I was in yesterday is is the peak period. Has the peak period grown, and should we add that half hour in the morning to 9:30, and add that half hour at night to 6:30? And this was a discussion about fares; it wouldn't make people really happy. But um, yeah, so that's what we say. I totally agree with someone over here. Is that that's kind of the traditional go-to-work time, but there are a lot of people that go to work outside that, um, and you have. But that's when the biggest travel is. That's when the freeway is more crowded. The roadways are more crowded. That period of time. So <laughs> that question kind of leads into the next one. Do you use that model for everything, or do you look specifically at areas and routes and how peak service is affected, especially around schools, like colleges? Our peak time is from 7 a.m. until about 1 p.m. is our peak time. So by some of what I'm seeing here, you're affecting 6,000 students. So, and, and we realize that, same thing at the U, you know, where, you know, we see the 271 from the east side, and, you know, park and rides on the east side filling up later, kind of the same with Microsoft, have a tendency to go to work a little bit later, you know, come home later. So we do look at that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, Doug, maybe we can say what we looked at about the arrival time. I mean, the other thing that would be great to have is, you know, a map of where your students are. You know, we just got going, got, got through a process on the east side where we work closely with Bellevue College, and you know, kind of tell us what their drop area is, and kind of give us a, a hand in designing service for them. I would love to get any kind of data that you used um, to help generate that, because uh, as a student body representative. Um, we are actually in the process of creating a student forum in regards to transportation and how South Seattle is ha handling things, um, how the new King County proposals could be, you know, potentially affecting our student demographics. And we would be more than happy to, as the student leaders, go out to the populace and say, hey, we need to know where you guys are coming from so that we can give this to King County because of these proposed changes. So, so you don't have addresses. We don't need names, or I mean, you can't provide a, a GIS map of. We can of try, but we've run into issues um, just trying to get a large emailing list from the administration. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we can probably work with the yeah. James Lewis to get that. Yeah, you guys work yeah. together. Yeah. The yeah. Which is my point. Chaz will be the last question, but um, I did want to say that, I mean, they have the handout with all the, pub there's plenty of opportunity uh, to comment and participate, and so let's just have Chaz as the last question. So it's really, it's two observations. One, with the, the service chain, we, we presently now have junction to junction to junction service provided by the 128. So you can get to Admiral, to Alaska, to Morgan. And of course, California is our main street, and removing uh, through California service is probably a negative overall for the community. And putting uh, self and Denny High School on peak does not match Denny Self High School. <coughs> so you basically removed public transit from Denny Self High School. And what's the other? And what's the other? Yeah. Which, which sorry, which route was that? That was the one. Uh, that was the 22, 22. And uh, Thistle shows uh, peak 22 service. I mean, it doesn't matter what the, the bus is. Um, 
It's literally a quarter of a mile from 35th Avenue. You can expect kids to walk, but in the rain, you're not going to get a lot of high school students walking. So right now, the buses are relatively well used in the morning and the afternoon. I don't know how you address that, but just an observation. That's true on 55 too, in West Seattle High School. Well, in the community center is right there across the street, and they're talking about moving some of the utility services and things like that there. Which community center? Oh, uh, Southwest uh, Athletic Field and Community Center that could potentially be the new neighborhood service center as well. So you actually have another uh, end point on Thistle uh, oh. in, in between the 120 and the 21. Okay, so that's on Thistle near right. your cell. Yeah, yeah. Right. actually, cell is across the street from it. It's, oh. kind of like, it's kind of like the way Meadowbrook is set up. And Delridge Community Service, or the Delridge Neighborhood Center is moving to that location. That um, is it. it hasn't mm -hmm. been finalized. Okay, because we've heard concerns right. from, mm -hmm. from staff there as well. Okay, so um, there, there were several points of, of comment, and did you get them all, or did you have any follow-up questions? I think between us all. Yeah. Clara, something to clarify? I think we captured, I was writing every word practically, so I think we got people's comments, concerns, and suggestions for what you'd like to see different. Um, and so, as you said, there's these public meeting opportunities. There's a survey online. If you would prefer me to mail you a hard copy survey, I'd be happy to that do that. That would be necessary because uh, I tried. Uh, my wife got into it, but I tried to get into the into the survey today, and got um, Survey Monkey or whatever it is. All that they wanted me to do was fill out their survey about my stuff, stuff that's frankly none of their business, um, like my income and other things. Uh, and and I couldn't get to your survey. Okay. So we'll I'll follow up with you to help you okay. fill out the survey. And um, we also have a self-facilitated meeting guide for your neighborhood groups. If you'd like to host your own meeting and collect feedback on your constituents' behalf, we can help you to do that. Because it's such a tight time period and there's only so many of us covering the entire county <laughs> going out with all these changes, we really do need your help to get folks to tell us what they need. Um, so that's another way to do that. Uh, let's see, I had a list. What else can you do? Certainly helping advertise the public meetings to get people to come um, would be a great help. Um, and there's lots of ways to provide input at the meetings themselves. This is the first phase, so we'll be coming out now with this initial suggested set of ideas, getting feedback. We're coming back at the end of January and February with your input in mind to say, here's what would change about what we were thinking, tell us what you think about this. And then we work on it some more, and it goes to the executive. The executive proposes it to council as an ordinance in March. April will be the council's public hearing process on these changes, and they will make a decision about it likely in May, and it would be implemented in September. So there's three likely public... Late March. <laughs> late March. Okay. Okay. Well, would be wonderful. So, so, so there's those three opportunities really for public input, and it'll have iter there's iterations here. What would be... We'd love to have you at our February meeting. Um, and what would be great is for us to have the something to review prior to the meeting so that we can come more prepared and um, we can do more. 